In this video, we discuss importing a CSV from Amazon S3 into a table in Microsoft SQL Server. Let's dive in. Uh, so you can see we're gonna take this test.csv from our YouTube videos folder in our Shipyard Solutions internal bucket. Uh, so we'll use all those values in just a moment when we're building out our vessel. Um, so let's jump into Shipyard and do that. So let's search for our S3 blueprints. And we wanna download files. So this is gonna download files from S3 into Shipyard. You can see when I click the blueprint, it pops up a vessel inside of our fleet builder as well as pops up a prompt for you to click on the authorization guide here. Um, if this is your first time using S3 inside of Shipyard, it's good to work to the authorization guide to make sure that you don't get an error on your first run based on setup. So I'm gonna close that. Uh, we're gonna name this vessel download CSV from S3. Um, and again, our bucket name, Shipyard Solutions Eternal, folder name, YouTube videos. Um, our file name, again, going back was test.csv. We don't want to put it in a folder uh, or the local file name here. Our access key ID, um, again, grab that from our S3 information and then our secret access key as well. And then we use the West 2 region. Um, so this looks like, so this S3 vessel is completely set up. So this is going to grab that file from S3. So now we need to add our SQL server vessel um, to take it into a table. So upload CSV to table here. Um, we can name our vessel upload CSV to table. Okay, and then we just need to put our inputs in for our, our, our SQL Server instance. So our host, our username, uh, grab the password. Our database is test DB. Um, again, we don't have extra URL parameters, don't have a folder name. Um, so we can call this, there's our file name, so test.csv. So that has to match the name from the first vessel. In the table name, this is what we want to call the table inside of SQL Server. So I'm going to call this data from S3, excuse me. We can choose to append, replace, or add data only if the table is empty. I'm just going to leave it append for right now. Um, and you can see we also, for each vessel, uh, we can set up notifications for any error or any completion of an on-demand run. So that'll send an, e an email notification to you if either of those things happen, if you have those selected. As well as we have guardrails for the number of retries, the time between retries and runtime cutoff as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is connect those together. And again, if I wanna read my fleet here, um, I always try to go back and look at my fleet and read through it one time to make sure it's gonna do what I want it to. Uh, so this first vessel tells us it's gonna download the CSV from S3, so it's gonna pull in the shipyard. If that's successful, we'll then upload the CSV to a table inside of SQL Server. Uh, so our fleet settings here, we're gonna have S3 to Microsoft SQL Server. Um, and then we, again, we can set up fleet notifications as well for our email. We'll leave that as it is currently. So we're gonna click save and finish. This is going to take us to a page telling us that the fleet has been created successfully, as you see here. And we wanna go ahead and click run your fleet. So this is gonna tell us that the fleet's been successfully scheduled to run immediately. Inside a shipyard, we call that a on-demand run. Uh, you can kick off those at any time by clicking the purple run now button on the top right-hand corner of your fleet, of your fleet, uh, fleet builder or fleet log inside of the fleet part of the website. Um, you can also kick off your fleets in two other ways using our trigger tab here. Uh, so you can use our scheduling trigger as well as our API trigger uh, to kick off these fleets programmatically if you would like as well. Um, you can see this took us over into our fleet log where we can we have live uh, we have a live view of what's happening with our fleet run. Uh, so if I click inside of this Gantt chart here, it's going to give us the vessel output from Python that tells us exactly what happened during this run. Uh, this can be super helpful for error handling if something went wrong, but it's also nice to look at even if it's successful here. Um, so you can see that it, you know, this file from uh, from this bucket in this folder was successfully downloaded to Shipyard here. Um, so go back to my fleet builder. Um, you can see that it is now finished uploading uh, to to SQL Server. So I can open up my SQL Server instance here. Um, I can refresh my database, reconnect to it real quick. Throw my password in there. and then reconnect to it, and then you're gonna be able to see that table um, inside of, let's see, databases, test DB, tables, and then we're gonna be able to see our data from S3 there uh, with our columns and keys and everything that we wanna see there. Um, so in this video, we talked about how you can download a file, download a CSV from Amazon's S3 and then turning into a table inside of SQL Server. If you have any questions about this solution or any other potential solution, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. You can go to shipyardapp.com to start building powerful workflows just like this for free. 
Want to see us tackle more solutions? Check out these related videos.